All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again now to the Star Ladder I League Star Series Season 14 here. My name is Blue, hosting you for this evening, and joining me is going to be Hugo. How you doing tonight, man? I'm good. I'm good. How are you, dude? I'm uh pretty well, pretty well off. We had that. We just had that first game, of course, that went pretty pretty dominantly in the favor of uh in the favor of Envy, if I do say so myself. But now we're about to jump into our next match here, which is going to be between Orglis and Kingwin. Kingwin, of course, sort of had some changes coming off across those guys for uh, some of their some of the recent weeks, and then also them with mainly with Screen leaving the roster. But Orglis, I don't know much about them, and I think uh, I think both of us are kind of kind of in the laps as to what they're doing. So, do you know anything about yeah. these guys so much, or is it sort um, of for both of us like a like just an open book? Um, yeah, I'm very similar to you. It's, they're, they're a new lineup, uh, best of my knowledge. I haven't seen too much of them play, really, and I think it'll be very interesting to see them uh, play against G2 right now. But, um, yeah, again, I'm not 100% sure on, on their playstyle or anything really about them in terms of that, but we are going into the knife round regardless anyway, as we see both teams are line up on the yard. And they're going to go right into this. They're going to play for this once again here now. And obviously on a map like Train, uh, definitely something that you'd want to be winning the knife round on with it being fairly CT-centric. And for Orglis too, uh, when you look at a team like them going up against King Wenu, of course, not having Scream on the roster anymore, so not as big of a reputation, but still very competent squad of players that have sort of grouped up recently and have been sort of floating amongst the mitts there on some, the, some of the better European teams. So Orglis, of course, wanting to come out on top, but not going to happen. So more than likely, they're going to have to get their start off back over on T side, which is not going to be uh, not going to be the most optimal situation situation for them if I do say so myself yeah but one you know one positive that they do have to work with is the fact that G2 do have a stand in today they've got Rubino from Copenhagen Wolves covering for Fox who isn't in uh, so you know that could work in a little bit of the favor of August you know strategies aren't going to be fully committed you know as they would be if they had all five players on the roster which is you know uh, a silver lining for August but we'll see if it really pays off and if it will have a, a huge amount of effect in the game Rubino obviously uh, not a very bad player at all and you know, although he may not know the str the strategies that G2 have, he can definitely, you know, perform in terms of aim, uh, in that sense at least. And here we go into the pistol round as we uh, do see Orglis buying up four armor and one, uh, one nade buyer, so that's a very default T-side buy on train, I think, so far. Smoke from Dead Fox as well, gonna get tossed into the outside yard there, just to throw some attention over to it. And it's a pretty heavy stack here from King Wen as well, a lot of their players focused on this one, so on the inside yard itself, gonna be mainly over here. This player from King when Dennis trying to hold things off. He picks up one kill over there onto the top armor as he tries to work his way into there, but more pushing forward. They still get that plan off. A nice nade goes deep though, does so much damage. That's gonna be JK and Makalele that just come in and clean things up with two more kills. Dead Fox and Barcode still up and rolling for the time being, but Rubina moves in. And Rain is also gonna pick up an additional kill on a Barcode there as well. So the last player is sort of stuck in a corner. They should easily be able to handle the defuse at this point. And I believe this pistol round will be going by the way of King Wen, and indeed it shall. Yeah, Devok's not in a primal position there to kind of pick up any frags, and you, you could just see that Kingwin's retake were, was kind of flawless there. You saw uh, Flash was actually pushed up quite aggressively, as you usually do, after getting the run down on uh, B-Site Train, at least, and he was pushed up all the way to Connector, and they completely just shut him down with a nice uh, nice shot there from, I think it was uh, Rain, if I'm correct, but either way, easy round for Kingwin once again, and we're going into the second round, where I imagine Orglis are going to eco after getting that bomb plant. They're not going to want to spend too much money, be able to buy up third round, which is going to be good for them, and Kingwin are just going to go for a full heavy rifle buy only one uh smg which is going to be on dennis knowing that he can mop up these easy kills as orglis won't be buying up armor and orglis just going for a pretty def default take as far as the uh, outside yard is concerned players in tcon we're gonna have one jumping down into the ladder room there too trying to make his way in from that angle but overall just expecting the decking to come in here now rain already with one finds a second two minutes to squeak through the cracks but they already noticed them here and they've got the call out so yep doesn't really go anywhere with that one and king with a quick shutdown in the second round yeah, very expected kind of round. If you push out into the A site with uh, nothing but a couple of pistols, maybe some Glocks and PT-50s with no armor at all, as well as no smokes to you know hold off the angles, they're not really going to come out too well on that, especially not even a smoke to uh, get the bomb down as well. But Orglis are going to be able to buy, and Dead Fox buying armor in the second round means he's going to be limited to a Deagle now, so no AK for him, but we'll see how he makes it work. Pushing into A main here. The farmer going to wait to see if he can catch anybody here too. Dennis sort of on the bottom of the ramp, potentially with the potential to move up to that area, but not going to be moving forward just as of yet. He sits back, plays it very passively for the time being, and oh, JK missing an opportunity there too to pick up one of these guys as Dead Fox almost ends up peeking that, but unfortunately, JK caught in a weapon swap, so not going to be able to find it. The least smoke comes out over there towards lower, however. Now for the rest of these guys, they're going to sit back, play it nice and cautiously for the time being, as Lurgus with this big buy up here in the third round, definitely going to look to try and make as big of an impact as possible here. As they have forced it up to some degree, and are going to have to make sure that this take is false. Unfortunately, though, for Kingwin, already having the extra player, which Makalele in this site, not going to help. And also, Rain kills the Lurker, so they're not going to have that in play either. Yeah, I think that Rain's already got the information. 
stuck in the middle to B side and it's going to be demonstrated as Dennis picks up a nice single kill and Michael Ailey also getting one of his own as Oglas get kind of shut down on this B push only Barco and Nay left alive and Barco and HP not looking too good as Michael Ailey finds a frag onto him now it's just Nay and he's not in a great position especially with no Nays to throw down onto the bomb uh, post plant here Michael Ailey is going to be forcing him out of position with that Molotov and there we go Rubino coming out on top there showing that although he may not have the strategy he still has the aim to come on top of Oglas here and G2 Kingwin are going to pick up their third round I think another key factor too is just the minimal investment from Kingwin a lot of the guns they had in that round came out previously from the uh, from the second round there too and you can even see that with by the scout on some of those players that were still left alive so didn't really invest too heavily into this one so they get out of that one obviously having to go for a little bit of an expenditure on those that need to rebuy but for those that managed to survive and we can see here too four of the guns are donated or either picked up from the previous round with three AKs in play so they make it out of that one nice and easily and Orgulus with a force have to go into another Tech Knight armor round essentially. Yeah, Orgulus spending a little bit of money so they can get some armor and nades to work with and they're going to be using them towards EA side at the moment but Still uh, keeping some money in the bank so they will be able to buy up rifles once again, uh, regardless of the outcome of this round. And you can see the push comes to commence and Rain and JK are also going to pick up first few frags. It's just going to be a complete shutdown though, once again from King Gwyn and Rubino finishing off Dead Fox there. So a very expected round there. You know, all, despite having all the smokes down, uh, didn't manage to do really too much. I got a couple of kills onto G2, but Orglas are not going to take that round at all and left at AKs now. So at least they have something to work with, but no AWP just yet. Nope, and unfortunately not really going to be seeing really a whole lot of really a whole lot of a potent take to be had here either. The big problem when we look at their buy now is you know they've only got that one HE grenade. They've got flash someone to work with, but unless they've got a good smoke setup, it's going to be very hard to force their way into the site without any mollies or anything. So they're going to push right forward. And the smokes again aren't even really being used at this point. They're just trying to force their way into the site. That doesn't go very well. It ends up being actually no, they even traded out. They ended up getting a three for three trade there. But now JK comes back and he picks up a kill over there on the flash. And now Marco would still holds his own catches. That one player that tries to lurk around in there from connector, but caught off guard there by JK as he flanks him once again. Picks at the final frag on a barcode and Kingwin come out on top with the final player left alive. Yeah, Kingwin with a nice lead already though. 5 0 and Orglas are going to be able to buy it once again despite not getting the bomb down, getting that $3,400 bonus for, well, losing this many rounds in a row. And I think they need to kind of try and reset Kingwin's money at least. They're going to start building up a bank. And at least that round they got four frags. So it managed to, you know, give some kind of dent into uh, into Kingwin's economy. You know, they're down to quite low money. Michael Ailey, the only one rocking, you know, almost $5,000. But if Orglas can just do a little bit of economical damage, reset Kingwin's win bonus and just turn it into a loss and then pick up a few rounds off that that could be good for King Win and Team Bros. We know the CT side of the economy isn't really too great at times and you know uh, this the map like train ecos aren't as kind of dominant as they are on close range maps such as Inferno so Orglas could definitely put, uh, come out on top if they manage to force G2 into uh, some kind of eco but Rain here with some nice aggression on the top of the train does get a dink onto farm and not managing to turn it off into a kill it's just going to back and play a little more passive. He spots Dead Fox on the way back there too, so he knows there's a presence here. And again, the players from Orglis, at least for now, potentially try to line up away on their default take. Not a lot of play towards Ivy, so it's not going to be very dynamic. And then you've got Jakame just absolutely ripping these players apart. Two from Ladder Room already going down due to his wrath. And now again, we can see too the flashes are coming out from the T's. They know that Rain's sitting up. They, I think they know that Rain's up on top of this train. And there we go. Dead Fox picks up the headshot to shut him down. But Jakame's still alive from within that ladder. He's only going to find one more though before the farmer comes in, and that's going to be able to take him down. Now looking at three players left alive. Still a pretty good hold from these players, but unfortunately with them being in. Injured, and again, no utility in order to make the rest of this take happen. Dead Fox, the final player, is going to have to fall back and look for some other avenue to get himself into the site. Yeah, but this doesn't look like a very doable situation with only a little 20 seconds left in the clock. Rubino is going to finish him off there, and King went up to their sixth round in a row. So Orglus really having nothing to say at the moment. A pause is going to be called in, though. Uh, apparently complaints of the server lagging coming out from Flash, so just going to wait for that to get fixed. I... Uh I don't really, I don't really know. Maybe they're getting some choke or something. Yeah, I was about to say it. It would have to be like ping inconsistency or something, or just choke, as he said. Because he looks fine at 38 ping, and it's like not moving. So I'd have to guess it's bad routing or something like that would be yeah. the primary problem if it's anything, because we wouldn't be able to see that obviously. But these players are from Hungary, so. I don't know what the, uh, the internet status is there, as I know that that's, for the last game I was in, that was a pretty consistent problem, was all the different European ISPs would have routing problems to the servers, so... Yeah, that could be an issue, really. We don't really know. Just got to speculate, I guess, and... Uh, Bash is going to cause an um, call an unpause, so we're just waiting for Kingwin to, uh, to unpause as well. And I can imagine they're going to be quite content with what they got at the moment, 6-0. They just want to keep... Uh, keep playing. I don't think they're going to really complain too much about ping problems, and we are going to be coming into the seventh round here, as the impulse is called. Orglas once again buying up, though. Uh, very relentless at the moment, even though they are kind of lacking on money. They've got three Galils here, and not a lot of smokes either way, uh, either for a take. And they has got a Molotov as he goes towards the B site, but 
you know, not really looking good on kind of economy, uh, whereas King Gwyn is going to be able to build up theirs quite efficiently. And Michael Ailey getting the first pick there. Fox going down on main again as Orglus pushed onto the B site and Barcode is going to manage to get the bomb down there. So at least they have that kind of advantage at the moment, but it is a 4v4 and it should be fairly easy for King Gwyn to retake. Yeah, Dennis took too big of an arc there on the way out, so he is going to end up falling and this reduces their potency a little bit here. And we can see they're kind of stuck in the back a little more, but these nades are going to roll back in. That does a nice amount of damage and here they go. They're going to start pushing and they didn't catch that one player by tanker, but I think Rain knows he's there. So he's going to come in, face checks that, shuts him down. Defar was able to find additional kills, so it leaves it in a two on two. There's also one just outside of the bright train there, and there we go. Rain's gonna take him out, but they're not spotting him. And Rain actually kills him from up above there. And just with a little time left here, and oh, there's this apologies. We're gonna see JK close it out. And G2 once again remain undefeated now, seven to zero against Orgulus. Yeah, so a really nice lead. And although Orglus did lose a round, finally they did finally get a bomb plant. Uh, we'll be able to buy up AKs this round. Shouldn't have too much problem with that. Again, no AWP. Oh, well, no, sorry. They appears they do get an AWP. Farmer actually deciding not to buy armor, just sticking with his AK and Dead Fox going for the armored AK. So a very, uh, an armored AWP. So that's actually a very interesting idea. Uh, Farmer not having um, any armor with his AK could be a bit of a problem if he's going to go for some entry frags, but he's going to be playing passive towards Ivy at the moment. Just wants to kind of pick up some fra flags on the Frank, I can, uh, Frank? Flank, I can imagine. Even towards Ivy, though, that's that's going to be a pretty hard angle from the push with that armor. He's going to rely pretty heavily on like a smoke or something, which he doesn't have. He's only got a molly yeah. at this point, so that, I'm not sure if that was the best decision. But Dead Fox as well picks up the opening kill there on the JK. But another thing, too, is I mean, the, the op doesn't really need to like fully peek or as much as the AK does. So it's like the op can sort of just pop out, take a shot, and then fall back into cover there. And it's yeah. going to be an easy kill for Flash to grab as Rain just caught completely out in the open. Doesn't even react to the first couple hits that went his direction. And he's going to get dropped down once again here as these players from Orgulus finally find a way to get themselves in the outside guard with a man advantage to start this off, too. And there's Flash with another one. Shuts down Rubino, and they're making some great progress here. Nate picking up an additional one, and now it's just Makalele on the site. Tries to go for the no-scope, but can't find it, and Flash is going to shut it down. He picks up a 3k that round, and Orgulus finally get themselves onto the board here. Yeah, so that's good for them, but the only issue Orgulus have got to worry about now is losing this round, because obviously they've been building up a nice economy from having $3,400 last bonus, and now if they lose this one, they'll be back down to $1,400, so that could be a real problem for Orgulus, and pretty much, you know, GG the half, as you could say, I guess, because Orgulus will have to continue to eco up until they built up that bank that they originally had, that they've been working with to buy these uh, relentless full buys, and you can see JK, I'm just getting really close to the spike and Barco, they're going to spot him out there, finding... Uh, not actually finding that frag, sorry, Jacob. I'm just getting on top. Ladder's uh, getting uh, getting in the way of his aim, but Dead Fox is going to retort with a nice little shot onto Jacob. And now they've equalized into a three on three, but Michael Ailey is Dead Fox could do some damage. Flash is going to hold strong by the electrical box. He takes down Rain. We can see their two Makalele. He's trying to sneak up. He finds one, but a great reaction from Dead Fox. Shuts down Makalele directly after that. And now it's just going to be Dennis left alive. Going up in a one-on-two situation. To be honest, not a whole lot to work with. There's plenty of guns nearby, and thankfully nobody else is going to be moving against him. So if he should choose, he can pop right out here. Probably pick up a rifle or something like that. But for the time being, he's just going to have to sit in Z and wait for the actual play to come out from Morgulus here while they themselves are taking their sweet old time trying to figure out exactly where they want to make that push. Yeah, but as you said, getting a weapon shouldn't be too out of the question here. It just depends if he he move, hurry up some moves because you can notice he doesn't actually have a kit on him, so he's gonna need to speed up here. And we can see Farmer and Devox actually dropping down into Pop Dog. So either way, I don't think he's gonna have much chance in getting a uh, a rifle here. But if they go for the plant on the middle side, on the middle of the train, he should be able to get a pick. And no, they're gonna smoke off connection instead and just go for the safe plant here. But he's gonna run through the smoke. Obviously, who wouldn't with a Max Seven? And they're gonna spot him out. This could be an issue for Dennis, but. He has got that range advantage. Does get that first shot onto Farmer, and now he's spotted out for Deadbox. So perfect position to play from him. Deadbox is going to be flashed out and just throw the monitor onto the bomb. And with no kit, this could be a real issue for Dennis. He's not going to be able to defuse this. He's got to chase it. But perfect play from Deadbox means he's just going to back off and play passive. And this round should definitely go to Orglus. There's no way that Dennis will be able to clutch this. And Dennis is going to pick up that AK, creep back in, hoping that Dead Fox have recommit to it. But again, Dead Fox actually plays that really smart, and will even catch him. Oh, almost is going to miss. It almost is going to get that opportunity to catch him on the way out, but a little bit late on the time in there. But still, as you said, perfect play from Dead Fox there. That was also some really good play from Dennis. And I mean, had Dead Fox had not chosen the very smart and passive path that he'd done, more than likely, I believe we might have actually seen Dennis come out on top there. But yeah. thankfully, he 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 knows his he knows his limits. He knew he had a pretty good idea too. They didn't have the kits, so he just tosses that molly, plays it to a long range battle, and ends up coming out on top. Yeah, that Molotov was very key. Without that Molly, that round would have gone completely differently. Because Dennis could have picked up that rifle, you know, the AK, and just sat on the bomb and waited for him to peek. But nope, Oglis going to pick up that second round, which is just as we were saying was very important. Uh, it's good they can finally at least get themselves on the board in that sense, and they're going to be going straight towards the B side. Very questionable play here, but Flash is going to make it work somehow. Taking out Makalele, Rain will be there to retort, but the Farmer also picking, him up, picking up one of his own, and King Gwynar stuck on an eco here. Dennis with the only rifle. 
The King going in. He's going to be spotted out, but no, he's going to come out on top there. Taking two quick headshots and finally going to get traded without AWP. So Rubino instead grabbing the rifle for King Gwyn. And this is good eco already. They're down to a two versus two. And this is definitely doable. Despite not having a kit, a lot of damage is going to be done from Jacob. And there we go. Rubino actually finishing off the frag, leaving just Barco to come in from the flank. Barco, though, thankfully he's got the aim punch advantage against Jacob. So he is going to be able to eliminate him there. And now pressing back in. Still the problem. No kit here on these CTs. So he's looking for that kill. Barco knows he's not going to have it. So he just sits back just outside. And he knows he's got it at this point. So he's going to move away, and again, that's going to be another round that goes by the way of Orglis. Due to the players here from Kingwin not having a kit to work with. The only positive the King can look at is really they got four kills on almost the full eco with only one saving rifle. So I think they should definitely be happy with that, especially with the fact that they were mainly retake kills. You know, Rain was getting one as they pushed him to the site, but the rest were kind of retake kills uh, from Dennis at least. And, you know, I, I successfully, well, I'd say in that sense, and Orglis are going to be able to buy up once again. No AWP on Dead Fox this time. So they'll push forward once more here, and with a big economical advantage, Orglis are going to be feeling pretty good about themselves. Not secure just as of yet here, but getting themselves into a good position for T-side. And look at how much forward the farmer has already gotten himself here. It gets flashed, but for some reason, nobody from G2 spotted him. Nonetheless, G2 going to pick up the two opening frags at this point. Almost losing one, and Dead Fox picking up the first kill, but now the farmer comes into play. Picks up two additional kills for his team. Looking for a third, gets shut down by Jakeem, and now it's going to be him versus Dead Fox, only with four HP to work with. Trying to find that final kill, and he grabs the headshot on a Dead Fox, shuts it down, and there's the eighth point now for Kingwin. G2, apologies. Sleaze the old name. <laughs> yeah, well, that was impressive for Jacob, to say the least. You know, I wasn't expecting him to take that, and unlucky to Augler, so they are going to be stuck in a bad economical situation. They will be able to buy if they choose to, but instead just going for the eco, uh, just to be safe. You know, they haven't got many rounds to work with either, so this is really going to be uh, a large mental toll on them, knowing that they're going to be put up to 9-3 and then going to finally be able to buy. So one smoke on Dead Fox to maybe get the bomb down, and... Barco with a bit of armor and a deagle to pick out Ivy here, and he's going to get some tags off onto Rubino. Not going to manage to finish anyone off. No one deeks just yet, and Rubino just playing this pass passive at the moment. Has a smoke and the molly, so he can mount he can waste plenty of time here on Ivy. And again, this is the first time we've really seen a lot of activity coming out from Morgulus from Ivy. Unfortunately, it's happening on an eco round, so we're not expecting too much to go by. So there's Rubino. Just, oh my God, it's raising yeah. down one, two, three, and then Jacane cleans up the final two. So. But still, again, that's that's been an avenue. I've noticed a lot of T-sided teams recently in North, North America and Europe not really playing towards that a whole lot. They're just kind of avoiding Ivy altogether there. It's a pretty hard angle to push if the CTs have a good solid hold on that, but could be very useful if you can find the opening pick and take out its initial defender. Yeah, definitely true. And Devfox picking up the orb once again, despite uh, losing the previous round. Obviously, it wasn't eco, and they had plenty of money to work with now. So, King were not actually going for the... Oh, sorry, Games 2. Now you've got me onto it. Games 2 actually not going for the AWP instead, and... Uh, Michael A just gonna sit with that uh, that M4 at the moment. This is the first time I've actually casted them as G2, so that's why I'm still using yeah. them. I, get, I did like three to four times I casted them when they were still King Win, so. Just, just still used <laughs> it to doesn't them. help, it doesn't help. It's yeah. alright, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get used to it, I'm sure, by the end of this best of three. But anyway, Orgulus again now. Still got a good amount of guns in the op at this point, still in Dead Fox, and obviously he's been doing some good work with this one. Definitely leading as one of the top fraggers at this point for Orgulus, but they take it nice and slow to start things off. It's going to be Makaleli and Dennis on the inside yard. Might get the pressure coming in their direction, but this could also just be a lot of nades getting tossed into that inside yard. And then the, with the other line, the other, the other two they have, they could pull it back over to ladder room. And that would put a lot of pressure on Jakeem, who's going to have to hold that as three players potentially could be just coming down that hole to try and rush him. Yeah, Dead Fox is just looking for some kind of opening here. It doesn't seem like King Win oh sorry, Games 2 are going to be playing Jakeem around now, though. They're playing a very passive play. He's gonna move in. They don't even see him at all. There's one, there's two. Looking for the third. Thankfully, Nate gets the response, but the damage has already been done. Now they know where the bomb is, and if he spots his other two, it should be a very obvious movement. They're already moving Makalele back there to get himself into the outside yard, too, so they see this coming from a mile away. They're trying to sneak onto the site, but they've got the advantage now, and Reigns dropped the bomb carries. This tank not gonna go anywhere. Rubino pushes through. He's gonna shut down an additional player, and now it's just Dead Fox in the one on three. And nope, not going to make anything of it as so Michael A shuts him down there, showing he doesn't need an orb, and instead he's actually going to pick one up, and game is two now up to 10 rounds to three, and they've got a really nice lead going on to the uh, second half, as they finally play the second last round of the first half. And with this point here too, Kingwin obviously having a very dominating stance in terms of their overall position now in this game. Morglis unfortunately haven't really been able to pick up too many rounds. We're definitely more, more than likely unless we see an amazing round from Morglis here, probably going to be looking at that 11th point being picked up, so, I mean, obviously it's a CT-sided map, so we, uh... So we, we probably expect to see a score like that, but once you get to the 11th point now for uh, for G2, it's it's definitely getting to a little bit of a ridiculous point where they've got just that absolutely ginormous advantage, and it doesn't even play into sort of the half sides that you're normally used to. 
That was funny. I don't know if you actually caught that. Rapino just pushed all the way out of Ivy. Peaked into his spawn when they were setting up the smokes. And he went for some shots and only managed to do a little bit of damage onto Farmer. And from that, at least he got the information that Orgulus was setting up smokes and could call for the rotate. You can see that's exactly what's happening. But the bomb actually is going to go down here. Flash actually faking it and pushing the next one seven out of M4. He's going to find that frag onto Dennis. And oh, that's actually pretty impressive play for him. Rapino will shut him down. But Farmer and Barcode are still alive here. Pushing on the site. Really gets one, but he won't manage to find a second as Farmer comes out on top there. And Orglas actually winning an eco there, not much armor even to work with, and somehow they managed to make that work. Surprising seeing Rubino got that early information they were going for an A take. And they had a, I'm pretty sure too, I caught, I sort of caught at the end of it, but I'm pretty sure, as you said, they had absolutely no armor to work that, so that was very impressive to begin with that they even got that, considering the, the what had transpired previously. So big pickup there by Orglas, a big mistake from, uh, from G2, but G2 now, obviously, on the 15th round, still with plenty of cash left in the bank, at least for some of their players. Jakeem, unfortunately, still has to go with a, uh, still has to go with a dropped Mag 7, but that auto sniper comes into play. So they're gonna pick up one, it gets traded back out, and Barcode picks up two back over there through Ivy as they try to get aggressive. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be Rubino and one more player that try to push into that one. Doesn't really go so well, and that's gonna be a great start now for Morgulus as they even it out into a three on three, and they get basically free control of the outside yard because of this. Yeah, but Dennis has got the auto sniper. You no, know, that gun can be really brutal retakes. You can just spray through smoke and down to just rain though he comes around the corner does get one and we'll find a dink with the farmer but nope not managing to turn it into a kill and all are going to pick up the fifth round uh or their fifth round the last round of the first half and we will be going into the second half shortly but uh you know they didn't really do too badly although they were looking very bad on the first you know seven or eight rounds they somehow managed to bring it back to five rounds so i guess they can't really complain too much with that what, what would you think uh no i think they were doing a very good job i mean at least when you compare it to sort of the way the last set went there regardless i mean right from the get-go i think a lot of it was just trying to figure out how you play against a team like g2 because there's a lot of things that you sort of just you can't really you can't really just know from prior knowledge you just have to get in there get your hands dirty essentially and figure out how exactly to counter that out so we saw that they were actually doing they weren't doing so bad i mean we could see they were they were getting plans pretty consistently before they actually finally managed to pick up a round on round number eight and from that point forward you know they make it in there they, they get some close battles but they win three in a row at that point and then of course uh, we see King of strike it back a little bit but they they come back with that very good eco victory and the final one too so they're not they're not they're not too bad at all at this point and i think now jumping onto the better side they think especially if they can pick up this pistol there's a pretty good chance that they might even be able to swing this comeback Oh, but this is fun. Jacob and both Michael Ailey setting up smokes actually from B upper into A, and the rest of the players with armor up in A main. So they'll be able to drop down and pop off and then just take the A side from this. So that's exactly what Kingdom uh, Games 2 are going to do. Rain actually getting the first frag. No retaliation coming in from Orglis, and we can see Farmer is going to pick up one of his own, but at the moment they do have complete control of the site. The rest of the players are pushed back interconnected from Orglis, and the bomb should be going down just about now. And you can see Barcode here. The only one even near the site is going to be playing from Ivy, and the smoke is just holding off. So perfect play from uh, perfect play from Games 2, sorry. Managing to take the site with ease, you know, forcing back the players and ring getting that first kill was so key and now there's only two players left on all this and that's going to be Nay and Barcode and both of them are low HP, Barcode will actually go down leaving just Nay to fight Dennis here but he's got too many players coming in on him and that's going to be the round to G2 once again, 11-5 now, taking a very successful pistol round. Yeah, some good shots coming out there from Orglis but unfortunately the positioning from King or, god man, that's a rough one the positioning yeah. there from G2 <laughs> was just overall far, far superior to that of Orglis and of course they just had the advantage they got in, they got the plants so quickly and the rotation that came out there from Orglis was just not quickly enough to counter out G2's very aggressive take of the outside yard. So they're going to go into this. They pick up the advantage again, and this should this should really solidify themselves too, because if they don't have trouble with any of these anti-ecos, then they're potentially going to be looking at, uh, they're potentially going to be looking at like 13 to 5. Yeah, definitely true, and it seems like Jacob doesn't want them to pick up any egos here, but coming to the site, picking up two easy frags, and there we go, Flash. We'll find one with his CSS 75, but instantly he's halfway down on his ammo, and that's not too good. 12 bullets left, he's going to run out of the smokes, but run out of Pop Dog, sorry, and Reno will shut him down there. So, a fairly efficient eco, I guess. Oglis did obviously force by, so they had a little bit of a, a kit to work with, I guess, but 12 5 at the moment, and now they're going to have to fully eco. So, this should be when the P90 comes into shine for Jacob. To see just how well you can use this again, as as you mentioned before, Orgless now on a pretty much a full save at this point. Not a whole lot they're going to be able to do, so this will be an easy 13th round unless, unless an absolute miracle happens at this point. And King will have yeah. a solid lead. I mean, keep think of that too here, just the fact that they're playing against the CTs now and how how very delicate their economy is going to be. And yeah, this is a great by the way. One, two, three, four, five, kills like that. So, but but the big problem is that now we go into this gun round, and this is potentially Orgless's last chance to really get themselves into this game. And utility wise, they're going to be missing a lot here too. So they don't think up this round that's 14 points for Kingwin potentially an eco for Orglis they're more than likely gonna have to try and force it up there and then we're gonna be only one gun round one round overall away from Kingwin just closing out the map whereas Orglis would still be 10 rounds more away from just tying it up and taking it into OT not even winning out the game yeah so obviously a very important round for Orglis here and 
you know, they're not really rocking it on the uh, economy at the moment. They have got five M4s, so no Famuses on that, but absolutely no smokes to work with. One on there, and I think they've already used one, and that's about it. So Augulus aren't going to be looking too good coming into this round as G2 have a very nice and stable economy with uh, a lot of equipment again to work with as well. All these nades, all these smokes, and Molotovs and four of the players are going to be making pictures on the site, and they can play perfect after plants. And here we go, Michael Ailey, obviously showing they're getting the first pick from that AWP onto an A, and now they got the B site fairly open, only one player holding it, and that's just going to be a flash here. Just sitting here in the smoke, really nice position though, comes through it, does find one, the bomb is going to go down, but no, he's going to stop it, picking up two, and this flash is just completely in the way, Rain, oh, that's so unlucky for him, but Rain will just come out on top there, and it's looking really, really good um, <laughs> for G2 until that uh, flank came in, and now Dennis is going to pick up one of Tobacco, leaving just two players alive for Orglis, so it's anyone's fair game at the moment, and Farmer's going to come in and go, nope, this is our round, Orglis will just take it, and that was a, such a, just such a nice flank there, but wow, <laughs> that round. Yeah, there's definitely some interesting things going on there. A little bit rough from Nay at the start, too, if he didn't manage to catch that one, of course, as we saw Makalele just barely catching that shot. Dead Fox couldn't find the little taps that he needed in order to finish him off, so he ends up going down. So, a couple extra deaths that potentially could have been avoided on the Orglis side, but they do end up coming out on top, and this is going to be the good start. That was what they needed to avoid, is that could have been essentially the kick around there, as we already discussed. That could have been GG, but now they prevent it, they hold it back, and now their economy can build itself up a little bit here, too. Very rough, so it's not going to be able to stack up that much, but at least that gives them a little bit more of a chance to extend it here. But now a two for two trade will start things off. Dead Fox paws back out, catches one in between the train lanes, and there we go. They're catching kills left and right now, and they're going to close it out with flying colors there. Kingwood or G2, not even going to be able to find a way into this site to begin with, and no plan at all either. Yeah, so Orgulus getting that confidence build now, uh, now after that nice flank and uh, succeeding two rounds in a row. So they can just work off that. They build up a nice economy. King going, uh, God's sake. G2 are going to have to eco now, uh, obviously. A couple of pistols to work with. They have got two deagles, one on Rain and one on Dennis. So maybe they can pick some nice one deeks here as they go towards Ivy and Main. But uh, by and large, I can imagine Orgulus will take this round very, very flawlessly. So barcode again. Gonna try and make his way out, but Dead Fox is gonna pick up the opening shot here now. Makalele gonna. Oh, this is gonna be awkward. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to squeak his way outside of the smoke, but the Farmer was just looking right at him that entire time. And now potentially with another kill as well. And yep, he's gonna find it. Jakeem goes down. Now the bomb is on the floor, and this push unfortunately not gonna go anywhere as the Farmer just cleans him up left and right, literally farming them. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, and just sitting here very awkwardly. Uh, I can't imagine he's too happy about the outcome of this round, but I can't say he didn't expect it, I can imagine, and not even managing to pick up that bomb and back off towards the B site. They do have control of it completely. Yeah, picking up this fourth kill of the round is going to mean Orglis go for a flawless, as I said, uh, Antico there. So the comeback for the time being is very much so on here for Morialist. They definitely got a little bit more to work for. Five rounds down against Kingwin at this point, but another gun round coming out here at the hands of Kingwin. No op, unfortunately, getting into the hands of Makalele this time. That economy did reduce itself by quite a bit, so they're not really going to be able to afford that just as of yet. When he hasn't grown to that point, if he had gone for that, probably would have been a, uh, probably would have been just a last can of one. And obviously, again, with how strong Orgulus is starting to look now on their CT side, that could potentially change up a little bit here, so we'll have to see now. It's not well this take is going to be, but it's the same story for Orglis too, as I mentioned. They don't have an off yet either here, as they haven't built up their economy to that point, so both teams just working against five rifles. Yeah, Michael Lely sneaking out onto the site here through the smoke. He does catch Nay's rifle, but he's not going to manage to see his body yet for the go to go for the shot. And just missing Farmer there, but Nay is actually going to come out on top there, surprisingly, getting that headshot onto him. And now the advantage is on Orglis' side, especially with the HP. Rain is down to 11 after getting tagged quite early, and it seems like King, uh, G2 needs to... Try and find some kind of entry here. They're playing very passive angles if you look at them, just waiting for CT aggression, and Orglus are definitely not going to get aggressive in this kind of situation with the advantage. We can see now two King or man. <laughs> G2. It's fine. <laughs> I'm going to have to cross it out, dude. If I only wish yeah. I could draw without the map being up. <laughs> G2. <laughs> Being ahead at this point now. It sucks because like the Kingwin part of it is like so much longer than the G2 parts. So your mind just yeah. like goes to the longer part and is like, yeah, yeah. that's the team name. <laughs> no, it's not the damn team name. So they take their time with this, but definitely gonna solidify themselves onto an inside yard take now as they move in. And as they push themselves down, this is gonna be pretty predictable. So Flash goes for that spray. Mm. Already some nice damage being done, but Rubino is actually able to respond to that and takes down the farmer. And on the way in here, there's Nay picking up one. Dennis gets the response, but Dead Fox as well as Dead Fox again pushes in, catching two more kills. And now it's just Rain with three HP. No way he's gonna be able to hold this. There's Flash, finds the final kill, and Orgus once again come out on top, bringing it up to 13 to 9. Bomb has been defused. 
But Orgul has actually been beating quite well so far. I haven't lost a round in, is that four or five rounds? Four rounds in a row now, so that's impressive at least. And they have obviously got the CT advantage, and uh, G2 having Rubino in play isn't going to be too helpful on the T side uh, when it comes to strategy, as we mentioned earlier. But at the moment, Orgul is building up a nice bank. They've got one player on 8k, one player on 5k, a couple on 4k. You know, they're, they're not looking too bad at the moment. And uh, G2, on the other hand, are on, you know, they're buying round to round at the moment. They're not managing to get anything uh, out of this. They did get a bump plant last round at least, so that's stop them from being pushed into either a glow buy or some kind of eco uh, but at the moment Orglis are looking like they could definitely make this into a considerable comeback and dead fox's position this should be great farmer two is pushed super far forward so these guys are really going to get in their face at this point try to work against them and kingwin oh my god g2 <laughs> might just be walking into a trap now at this point dead fox waiting Ooh. to see nope there we go actually jacame's gonna find the opener so let's push four players and oh no it just goes so bad so quickly g2 opened it up beautifully now and they're gonna find the openers this mod's gonna go down that's gonna stop them but the rest of the team is coming out now from ladder room they can't find any response at this point and they're finding two kills nay at least grabbed one there for orglis but that's it and it's just down the barcode at this point he's over here in the train lanes they haven't spotted him just yet he's got a good flanking lineup potentially coming in here if they aren't gonna be able to catch him but at the same time when he executes this has to be so fast there's the first one gonna be able to find dennis out in the open but now he's been revealed they know where he is and all attention is going to be drawn over to him finds a second one but reigns in there to cover and finally shuts it down before he gets any further they finally turn it around get up to 14 rounds that's g2 and Orglis are going to have enough money to buy they shouldn't be able to uh shouldn't have to eco at least for for a considerable amount of time but knowing the ct economy you know just a couple of rounds in a row will kind of shut down uh their money for the time being and you can see it's already not been too great with one player on 10k they're still having to buy up a famas on day there and uh g2 sticking rubino with just with this tech nine instead of a rifle not being able to afford too much i, su I would suggest the ump that'd be uh, a lot more fun i think but uh, tech nine it's basically an orp but way more faster i guess you know not, not a bad gun especially uh, on rubino's hands we've seen him play with it before and seems like king winner uh, g2 are just waiting for uh more ct aggression and rain actually entering the b site here flashes in it's holding it but no he's going to go down a nice shot from rain he's going to take a dink to the face and be down to one hp after dropping off the top that was so close but now they have control of the b site and all actually stacking four players towards a it wasn't a very viable strategy and so the Molotovs do hold them back in connector. This should be a very hard retake here, uh, even if they do have the kind of kit advantage. And Rain just showing that, getting one, one more frag off the bomb here in connector as Jacob shuts down Barco, leaving just the last two players in Orcus. They're going to have to save here. There's nothing they can do. If Barco would have been really the only player that would have been able to do anything, but Jacob was able to catch on to that nice and easily. Goes around back to where CT spawned at and is able to catch him out. So no progress is going to be made there. And as you said, these last two, just no way to get into that site. Just putting one player on the yard and taking the big risk on for the four stack on the outside yard. I mean, granted, there hadn't been a lot of play coming out there from from, uh, from the players on G2 to move into the outside yard quite a bit, but can't really rely on that one, especially with how how slow that rotation came in there too. That one player that was in the inside yard would react far too slowly to it and got the call out, so Orglitches were not quick enough on that rotation, and we just saw them get quick control far too quickly for Orglitches to do anything about it once the control had been made. And did you just get that Go TV like, or was that just me? No, we got it. It's a, it's a, oh, okay. that's, yeah. a, that's, a, Rubino... that's a thing that means something is going to happen, but I won't say it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I know what you mean. But of course, Rubino just picking up those two frags, stopping Orglis from saving. And now there's just three players left on Orglis, and this look, this should look like the GG round. They are coming up from the front, so they've got good positioning, but Michael Ailey is going to shut down one. They get traded out very fast, and they can just nay and flash alone. Bit of damage done. They will actually find that frag kill, even just rain alone in this one versus two. But at least he has got the kit advantage and he should be able to get the bomb down here very easily. And that's exactly what he's going to do. He's just going to go for the stick the plant and he's got plenty of nades to work with as well for this after plant. And Flash is going to try to go for a flanking maneuver against him, but they're giving him a lot of time here, as you can see. Just all this freedom being given to rain at this point is he's allowed to reposition himself, go wherever the heck he wants to essentially. And now he's going to put himself behind the, in the very, the very, the sort of the alley over here for the bomb lanes way in the back now, and it's planted for him as well, so he doesn't really have to move away from this. It's going to be very hard to contest him. There's going to be a smoke that comes out, and he spots before it blooms down to 1 HP at this point, working against Nay. Nay's Ney. got a rifle now, too, but he's going to jump up. Should have been able to see him, and Nay's going to miss that opportunity. The bomb's getting down so low, too, and he's going for that defuse. Is he going to be able to grab it? He's up on top, and he gets oh the headshot. Rain clutches it with 1 HP, and the timer gets a little bit too low, so gamers, too, are going to end up coming out on top at the end. The final score of map number one is going to be 16-9. to 9. Wow, that was impressive clutch there. I really didn't expect Rain to get that, you know, a 1 HP and uh, having to pull out that Glock last minute. But somehow, uh, G2, not King Gwyn, G2 are going to take the first map, 69. And the second map, if I'm correct, it should be on. Drumroll, please. Uh, Inferno. So that will be... 
I'm correct, Game is 2's map pick. So the first map uh, was actually picked by uh, Orglus, which isn't looking too good for them considering they lost it, but uh, and if we have to go to the... There's some good things building upon Orglus, though, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't count them out just yet. I mean, obviously Inferno, if we're going to that map next, that's going to be that's is going to be a pretty volatile map, as, as can be often for teams working against more experienced ones like Gamers 2, but... Uh, I, I wouldn't say, based on what we saw here on Train, Train, I mean, to be honest, is just as volatile, but I think we saw some good things here, so if they can perfect upon that and work on some of the issues in this first game, I think we may potentially be able to see a 1-1 as we head to map number 2. Yeah, definitely. And what is it with Rain in this one versus X cast, uh, a clutches on Train, you know, with 1 HP? He's done that twice now, if I'm correct. I don't know, man. I don't have an... Originally, originally event against VP, he did a 1 versus 4 with 1 HP uh, on train for the 15-14 tie, bringing it to overtime. Um, now he's done it again. So, you know, Rain obviously loves train. You know, you can see his score, 29-17 20, for that map. So, very impressive score. And I think uh, the players were asking to switch server midway through the game. So, I can imagine that's going to come underway because uh, of ping issues. And apparently, Germany's internet isn't too good at the moment because the server's hosting in Germany. But uh, not sure on the confirmation of that just yet. Yep, so uh, while we wait for that, guys, we are going to go to a short break here really quickly, run the ads real fast, pay the bills, you know the deal. And as soon as the next map is ready to rock and roll, folks, we'll be uh, right back. It might be a little bit longer for the reasons that we just mentioned with the server change, but we should be back ASAP with the next game here in this set. Gamers 2 currently leads against Orglis 1-0. And also, by the way, if you did miss our earlier set between Envy and Dignitas, the score's in the screen now. It was 2-0 to Envy, 0-0 to Dignitas. Sorry for the spoilers. But we'll be right back, guys, with the next map coming up here in just a few minutes. Stick around for the Starletter I-League Star Series Season 14.